the kids will watch what happens and learn from their mistakes. Like if you don't remember to spin the darn thing, then if you then if you burn it with a blowtorch for too long, it'll turn black, and that is not the kind of sausage you want to put in your Italian soup. Crazy Machines describes itself as the wacky contraption game. Actually, they are teaching scientific physics. They let you even alter some of the rules of nature, like gravity. The gravity machine is pretty cool. You could cycle in between Earth, Moon, and space gravity. And it really alters the way things work, and it can teach you rules about science so that you don't have to look at it. Look at, um, some dictionary to learn various rules when you can play a really enjoyable game. For okay. instance, um, when you said, when, as the gravity gets lower, balloons have less and less lifting power, and by space gravity they can't lift at all unless you give them a bump. And I asked my dad one day, why is that? And you say with no, and he said with no gravity to pull the other gases down. Is that it? The balloon. Probably atmosphere, Peter. But daddy, gravity will pull the heavier gases down that lets like helium rise. Isn't that what you, that's what you told me. Really? Did I? Anyway, it can teach laws of physics like that. The less the gravity is, the less effective lifting machines like balloons are. How do you? How does this game teach you about magnetism? Well, uh, pretty obviously, one of the units is the is the magnet. In this game, it's a horseshoe magnet. It'll pull metallic parts like weights and nails and and steel balls towards it. So magnetism is a pretty cool force. In terms of short range, it could suck metallic objects towards it, like defy the law of gravity by sucking a nail up against it, and then you can do something cool with that, like use a wind machine to blow a balloon into a nail that's pinned up against the ceiling by a magnet above it. You see this big background that you can alter to look like anything, a dungeon wall, a cork, a bathroom cork wall, a bathroom wall, even the background of space with this cool swirling nebula, and you get to pick up and move things and multiply them and zoom in to make sure you can line up things and you can pretty and you have pretty much ultimate control over the screen it's almost like a it's almost like a god game you can move things all around you can put together all sorts of cool contraptions anyway you can interact with the screen and learn the laws of physics through trial and error Peter, and do you like to read science books I do indeed um, ha uh, how does reading a science book differ from playing Crazy Machines? Well, um, many youngsters like myself would much rather learn through interaction and using their bodies and minds as opposed to reading raw text, which can be fun, especially if it comes with pictures, but it cannot match Crazy Machines. Where, I mean, you can't, like, pick up and customize the picture but in, in a book, but in Crazy Machines, how can I roast the sausage on the spit? And one of them might say, put a, put a nitro on top of it, and when the nitro explodes, it'll fry the top of the sausage. And if that doesn't work, you could try roasting it with a blowtorch. And the kids will watch what happens and learn from their mistakes. Like, if you don't remember to spin the darn thing, then if you, then if you burn it with a blowtorch for too long, it'll turn black. And that is not the kind of sausage you want to put in your Italian soup. Crazy Machines describes itself as the wacky contraption game. Actually, they are teaching scientific physics. 